All right, hello. Welcome to the Vegan Luna podcast. This is Kevin Luna, and I am here with another amazing guest. This guy is a huge inspiration to many in the health and fitness world. He does so much for kids and the youth and education, and he's a huge inspiration to a lot of people in Kuwait that have come across him. He's made a difference in people's lives. He's got people healthier. He's got people fitter. He is a good role model. He's not only an amazing um, you know, teacher and educator and fitness guru, um, he also is an amazing father. He has uh, three kids and a new baby um, that's uh, uh, super adorable. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll post some pic- pictures of uh, her, him? Him. Him. Uh, pictures of him. Uh, what's his name? Zaid. Zaid, yeah. So I'll, I'll post some pictures of Zaid. Um, and... Uh, the baby has an interesting story as well. Uh, we'll get into, if I don't forget, the story of the baby. Because um, your baby is super, super special um, for a certain reason. You guys will see. And, um, you know, we said, let's talk. Let's, uh, let's get into the podcast. Um, I'll invite you on. And you were probably like, yeah, whatever, man. Like, I don't know if you're really going to do a podcast or whatever. But here we are. We're yeah. actually recording the podcast. We got cameras up. Uh, we got the mics, we're in the room, we got the recorder, and we're ready to talk. So tell us, uh, tell everyone that's listening a little bit about yourself. Well, my name is uh, Hamza al Um uh, I'm 34 years old, uh, married with uh, three kids, uh, two daughters, one son. Uh, uh, became vegan only, uh, you know, two and a half almost three years ago oh wow two three years yeah and you know i think uh wait wait wait, real quick sorry i don't mean to cut you off before you get too deep you're a guest here and uh we need to take care of you so what do you want what do you you need some water you need some snacks you need some oreos i'll, I'll just eat uh sukari dates uh curry dates sukari dates sukari dates okay yeah. real quick sukari Sukari dates? Yes. Okay. Uh, the, the, uh, Sukari dates. F- fresh and dates. Fresh dates. Yeah. Okay, fresh dates. Are you okay? Okay. And, uh, water. yeah, water. Um, any, any like, vegan chicken nuggets? You want, like, an Impossible Burger or something? I could cook you up. We got some chefs in the back. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm okay with the uh, dates only. Dates only, yep. man, my man. Okay, so this is one tip to stay healthy, very disciplined. Okay, so uh, just uh, Oreos. Did I say Oreos? Oreos, uh, those are vegan as well. We, I know we got some of those. Um, not healthy, hold up. <laughs> Oreos are not healthy, but they are vegan. So if you're like, oh, I don't know if I could be vegan, just eat some Oreos for a little bit whenever you feel like chocolate or sweets. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, it's like, okay, you have two options. You can pay for an animal to die for a snack or you cannot. Yes. So just not, you know, so eating Oreos is a snack. Okay, not healthy, but a snack that tells you, okay, I'm not eating animals. I'm not being healthy. I'm okay with that. Yes. Right? So real quick, It's you any know, anything else you need? No. I'm no? Okay, so that's it. So just the dates, the Oreos, and the water. Yeah. Um, okay, so basically, continue. Now, I just want to make sure you're taken care of. You're a guest in This Is My House. In case anyone wondering where we're recording, we got a little studio set up in the living room, and it works, right? Does this not work? Yes, We can does. talk. It does, we can yeah. chill. Yeah. We, can, we don't got to pay for a studio. You know what I mean? That's the beauty of podcasting. Um, but anyways, tell me more about you. Well, um, I'm a middle school teacher. I teach. Oh, okay, um, yeah. uh, we call it literally in Arabic, اجتماعيات. It's called uh, social studies. I teach a bit about geography, uh, history. Uh, uh, you know, just uh, you know, a, a mix of those two topics. But you know, we speak about. Uh, We're recording good. Everything's recording. It's all red. I also teach about environment. So a uh, big part of vegan activism goes to that. 
Oh and yeah, I, for you sure. Know, I believe I I believe in planting seeds in uh, yeah. you know little minds. Mm-hmm. It will you know eventually have uh, a very big big effect. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Uh, I mean, that's what the science shows. You know, uh, uh, this is this is what I feel. You know, I can say about myself, but you know, if you have any questions, I can. Yeah, for sure. I mean, thank you for sharing. I think um, educating youth, um, I think, you know, some of the fitness stuff, of course, is all uh, is all part of you. And it and it and some people are like, oh, that's all you talk about. That's all that you care about. And it's just vegan this and vegan that. And it's like the question is, is there anything more important? Like if you were to be like, what's important? What's uh, hold on, hold up, hold up. What's important to you? Like, real quick. Now, is playing video games important to you? Mm. You know what I mean? Like, even if it is, even if like I love video games, is playing video games more important than saving the planet, saving saving animals, and saving people's lives? Yes. I, is that more important? No. Okay, so not. now if I just have to choose between based on what's more important, what's more important? Really, it's a good question. What's more important than going vegan? You save an average of three anim- 300 animals a year, right? Yes. You save like X amount of liters of water, X amount of CO2 gas, um, X amount of square footage of rainforest. And the point of that is that it's good karma. <laughs> it's good karma, yeah. That's a good way. Um, so the point of it is that um, that makes a difference, yes. you know? Video games does what? Okay, let's say you beat the most amazing, newest, hottest game out there. You beat it. You're the best. You're top sh- Maybe you can make some money. And then even that, you're playing video games to produce nothing, help no one, help nothing, right? Like you're not producing anything, you're not helping anyone, and you're not doing any good for yourself, right? So you get to the end of the video games, and you win. Now, some people don't even win. Some people that do win don't even make money, right? Oh, I beat the game. Oh, here's your check. Like, uh, no, that's 60 bucks that you wasted on time. You basically paid 60 bucks, or whatever a video game is nowadays, a new one, to waste your time. I'm not here to pick on video games. That's not the point. But the point is, think about what's more important. Mm. And real question, what's more important than going vegan? Do you want to know my real answer? Yes, yes, yes. Tell me. A lot of people, especially in this part of the world, think religion is more important than everything Okay, everything okay, else. okay. So yeah. whether that's true, or whether that's false, that's a really good point. Mm-hmm. Um, people think that religion is more important mm-hmm. than um, saving animals' lives or their or their health, right? So, okay, well, uh, let's say we get into that later, because that's its own thing mm-hmm. on its own. So, okay, so what else would you say? Let's say you're you want to tell me a story. Yeah. Why did he go vegan? Like, tell me like. How does that happen? How do you go from religion or belief or cultural challenges or traditional challenges or even finding the right food? Not into specifics on food because we have a, a specific time for the food. But the point is, what made you like really click? Be like, I have to go vegan and I'm going to be vegan for the rest of my life or whatever. Like, when was the moment that you're like, this is it. This is, I'm going to do it now. Yeah, it was my second day into uh, being vegan. Oh, shit. Just the Wait, second. Wait, so second day you thought. I thought, oh my God, I'm going to, uh, I, I want to be like okay. this for the rest of my okay, life. Okay, okay. And I think I just found a life hack, you know? Uh, yeah, a life hack. Yeah, for sure, life hack. So what was it, something you saw, something you read? Something no, someone uh, talked uh, about. Yeah, no, my, what, what, my, like, what made you try it? Like, how about that? How, why did you try it? I don't know. It just happened by chance. A day passed by with me not consuming any animal products. Oh yeah. And why did you do that? Like, what happened? 
I don't know. It just happened, you know. Uh, it, it was back in two thousand. I'm not sure if it, yeah. I, I think it was uh, uh, summer two thousand sixteen, and uh, you know, I was competing for a pro card back when I used to do bodybuilding. You know. Oh shoot, pro! Yeah. Wow. Almost getting that, you know, pro, pro card and becoming a pro bodybuilder. Yeah. But wow. you know, after 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 uh, ten years of being in that uh, field and using a lot of steroids and uh, you know, it all um, it all came in. You know, I I didn't through those ten years. I thought I was uh, I had very good genes and you know my dna was invincible yeah sorry because I, yeah <coughs> because i didn't get any side effects of uh abusing those uh yeah yeah uh, drugs maybe, you know maybe the side effects do come from the word abuse yeah yeah but Too you know uh, yeah, but so i i think i think me going uh for uh, one whole day without uh, harming my body just gave me uh, an overwhelming feeling that what I'm doing is the truth. I, I had certainty in my heart that, well, you know, this this is just miraculous w what's happening to my energy levels just because I didn't consume any animal protein. So I experimented for the next day doing the same uh, uh it was only uh, chia seeds and coconut uh, coconut water you know and nuts and seeds so basically raw food at the time i didn't know anything about vegan i didn't know the difference between vegetarian and vegan but you know through social media whenever uh, you get interested in something it's like you know I think it's, it's the best way to network nowadays through social media and social media it's only. It's the only way to network. Yeah. Like yeah. what we do is social, who we are is social. Everything about us is social. Like like we, people say social media to ruin us. I say social media amplifies us. Yes. It exposes us. Yes. It shows who we really are. Yes. I think social media is the window like to our mind would you not agree? Yep. If you have access to people's minds, you guess what else you have access to? Control. Yeah. Now, there are some companies that are doing an amazing job controlling people. Yeah. Right? And they just say we do this, they go there. It's like they're puppets. And that's that's fine. I mean, we all have our brands that we're like, "Oh my gosh, I'll do anything for." Like I love that brand. And that's fine. And they're lifestyle brands, you know. But I think there's some that that are out there that aren't maybe too focused on you. They're focused on them. Yeah. What can they get? How do they get more profits? Like the uh, meat and dairy and egg industry, uh, yeah. for example. You know, like but big, big pharma, big pharma. Yeah, sure, big pharma. Yeah. The um, the medical industry, the agriculture, agriculture. Industry. So there's there's GMOs, certain. GMOs. Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. There's places and businesses businesses that are big and they're controlling the minds. Now, yeah. what if, the, you know, I, I believe it's, it's, it's really uh, body, mind and soul. So if you control the body through poisonous food, you will control the mind too. And if you control the mind, you'll control the body. Yep. Yep. So that's the, that's the, the that's what the big companies are doing to the masses. Yeah. So they got their minds and they're controlling their bodies. Yeah. So what's happening is, we're in an era right now. It's getting very scary. Yeah. And well, one of the things. Big awakening happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but is it too late? No, it's not. We don't know that. Uh, I, I mean, think about this. What if tomorrow the sea levels rise 10 feet? And I, it's believe, I, I, I truly believe that time of change already happened. And it's going to be better from this year on but is it enough and is it it will be eventually enough eventually, because it's, you know how it's an avalanche we effect, have 12 you know? years though yeah. you heard that 12 years uh, how old will your son be 12 years from now 12 yeah your 12 year old son what future does he have you know what i mean mm -hmm. and i don't mean to scare you 
and I don't want to get off on a crazy topic, but just quickly, in 12 years, what do you see of this world? I think it's going to be a better world. There's uh, people uh, are, uh, I, I truly believe so, that through those past 100 years, people are evolving to be compassionate beings. Okay, yeah. okay, I, I can see that. Yeah. I see your point. So um, it, will be, it will get better. Eventually it will. Okay, so the question is not will it get better, will it be enough? In 12 years, we never will know, we have you know, changed fast believe, enough? I believe in the power of minds over matter. So if you, if, if everybody believes that it will be okay, it but if everybody believes we have to eat meat and we have to do it for religion, they'll never change, right? So you're right. Yeah, minds the, over matter. But 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 the numbers are saying the opposite. There is a big a mass. The numbers are saying the opposite in a very fast direction. But when you go from five people. And you multiply that by 400%, you have like 20 people mm. or 16 people. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So, oh my God, they grew 400%. Did you hear 300% in the US? And you're like, well, 300% of 300 is 900 or whatever. I you know, know like real quick, mm. yes, 400% is amazing, but you can't. It's going to get to 1,000. Real, real quick, you can't go. 400%, 500%, 600%, 700% because the numbers will be too big. Like, let's say you get to 20 million vegans. You're not going to go 400% of 20 million because 400% of 20 million is like, what, eight, 80 million? Mm -hmm. So you're telling me the U.S. went to 80 million last year because they're up 300%. Now, the point is, okay, maybe they go up 3%. And I don't know if that's good or bad. The point is that the numbers... Of vegans growing is skewed. Do you agree with that? It's what? Skewed means it's not accurate. Or it's accurate, but it doesn't reflect what 12 years will look like. Do you agree to that? Or you disagree? Uh, but, uh, no, I actually can... Uh, Are you good can at math? Not really, but... Okay. I, I, I can... I you get can the analogy I used? Sorry. Mm, I, I, I think it's going to get better. Yeah, better for sure, but you heard that the uh, United Nations published a report, a report from like the IBCC or something like that, like the International Climate Control, whatever. And uh, one thing they looked at was uh, they looked at how many more years left do we have before climate change is irreversible. Irreversible means that it's down a path. You real know quick, that real the, quick, the, 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 the... Real quick, it's down a path that... 12 years from now, if we don't make massive, and I mean massive changes See, to what I, we do, yeah. mm. if we get to that 12-year point, the climate damage and the global warming will be irreversible. You know what that means? Yeah. That means that it will not be able to shut it down. And you know what I think is going to happen? Mm. You know how they say global warming, global warming? And yes, it gets hotter in some places and colder in some places, right? Mm. I think that I don't know because I'm not a scientist and I'm not a whatever you have to be to know this stuff, mm -hmm. a meteorologist. But this is my belief. So let's say the earth heats up, mm -hmm. right? Let's say it warms up. Let's say the coral reefs die because that's happening. I don't, have you seen the coral reef deaths? Yeah. Have you seen the documentary? Yeah. Um, Chasing Coral? Yes. You've seen it? Yeah. Have you seen Chasing Ice? No. Watch Chasing Ice. Very similar to Chasing Coral. It shows the ice caps melting. It's crazy. But anyways, let's say that happens, right? Okay, it heats up. Everything melts. Everything's crazy. There's wars. Real quick, there'll be wars of famine. There'll be wars of uh, malnourishment. There'll be wars of no water. There'll be wars just to kill people because it's a fuck world. Mm. We'll go backwards mm. if we don't make massive change now in 12 years. So maybe we do a lot. We do better, but it's not enough. That's what I'm asking you. Mm. What if it's not enough? So what I want to do is teach people, people that are listening, people right now, that you have kids, right? Yeah. Anyone listening right now that has kids? Anybody? If you have kids, and let me look at the camera real quick. If you have kids, and I'm talking to you, I'm talking to the camera, I'm talking to you guys right here, okay? Listen, if you have kids and i'm sorry 
because I know you have kids and this is a tough pill to swallow. Yeah. But it's going to light a fire under your butt. It's going to put your ass on fire and say, I better do some shit with my life because my kids depend on it because they do. Mm. Do you agree that your kid, your actions now are depending on our kids' future? Yes. So the actions we make now are depending on our kids' future. That's true. Whether you believe in veganism or not, that's true. Our actions now will dictate our kids' future, right? Yeah. So the point is that what are you doing now for the animals, for the environment? What changes are you making that's going to impact your kids? One cheeseburger, for example, is 660 gallons of water. I'm using gallons for the U.S. Liters what? How many liters is that? I don't even know. It's a shitload of water, mm -hmm. right? And the point is that it's a crap load of water. Sorry. Mm -hmm. But the point is 660 gallons of water for a cheeseburger, um, 1,000 gallons of water for a gallon of milk, um, 300 square feet of forest is destroyed every minute or so, one acre. Um, the size of a football field, American football field, like per minute or some crazy thing like that. Uh, ocean dead zones, ocean acidification, um, water pollution, freshwater usage, rainforest deforestation, ocean warming, um, coral reef deaths, melting of the ice caps, um, incredible amounts of energy in the water that are creating more hurricanes and more extreme weather. The list can go on. The amount of land use we use, the amount of food grown that's given to animals, that is a lot. I know you know a lot about the environment. I'm just, I don't know if I'm just scratching the surface on this, mm. but I know a good amount from the environment too. And I urge everyone watching on the environment, everybody watching on the environment, what you got to do is first watch Cowspiracy. Watch Cowspiracy. Cowspiracy teaches you, would you agree? Yeah. Cowspiracy teaches you really everything you need to know from the basics. Now, there's more facts, there's more information, but Cowspiracy really sums it all up. I like food choices. Uh, food choices. Okay, that's another one. Guys, go watch food choices. Where can we find food choices? That's Netflix. Netflix. So, Netflix, food choices, um, Cowspiracy. And if you had to watch one about the animals, do we're talking documentaries here. Um, I would go Earthlings or Dominion. Earthlings um, is uh, too violent. Yeah, but if you watch exactly how your food's created, exactly, mm. violent or not, um, that's going to speak to your heart about the animals. Mm. Do you agree? Yeah, because um, it's, it's, it's all about how... It's all about the animal's eyes. Just watch the eyes and you'll figure out... You know, yeah, uh, how they're yeah, feeling. Uh, and uh, Oreos or whatever. <laughs> oh, dates, uh, dates. So thank you very much. Um, getting the dates and the, and the water and the Oreos. Um, so really, you would say you tried it. A couple days in, you're like, I'm sold. What sold you? Like, what happened to you that sold you? The veganism is for Do you. Do you want the, you know, my, my, ex, my, uh, explanation is that, um, my, because of the way I was eating, I was eating up to 11, 11 meals a day, three of which. 11 meals? Yes, yes. Oh my god. Yeah, I was really big. I can show you the pictures. Woo! Yeah. And that's up, crazy. Yeah, three of which were uh, red meat, steak. So the acidity of the food was just too much. It was killing your joints, right? Everything. Everything. You know, I I had the perfect physique, but the feeling from the inside, I couldn't I couldn't walk the avenues for ten minutes straight. I had to take rest. Wow. Well, there's probably people out there feeling that way right now, yeah, right? Yeah. The, and that it's that because the food, the acidity of the food. So once you stop. Uh, giving this, uh, you know, poison to your body just tells you to keep doing what you're doing, and that's that's the feeling I got. You know, I, yeah, so I believe more like the body, alkaline, right? Yes. Yeah. So, what I percentage um, alkalinity do you recommend? And explain that to the to the listeners. I recommend. I recommend. It's as simple as if it wasn't there a hundred years ago, just don't consume it. 
Uh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So uh, that's not like try to eat from a straight. That's like a modified version of the paleo diet. It's like if it was 10 million years ago, like whatever they believe, 10 million, I don't know, 10,000 years ago. Yeah. Uh, let's eat like them. Wait, what? Yeah. The hell? Yeah. We don't live 10,000 years yeah, ago. Yeah. We don't even live 100 years ago, yeah. but, but I'm curious but on what you say. It's a different take. It's a different take on that paleo, right? Yeah, yeah. But, you know, what, what I mean is don't, you know, st st try to stay as much as possible from processed food. Yeah, of course, of course. Processed and food. No yeah. counting calories for me. Yeah, I yeah, eat, yeah. I, I, I think the body is intelligent. Once you start giving it only clean, natural food, it will tell you, it will just, you know, give you, a, just tell you how much you should consume. It's like, it. it's like what kind of gas you put in the gas tank. Yeah. What happens to a regular petrol or gasoline yeah. car and you put diesel in it? Yes. yes. It's going to, it's going to, Yes. It's gonna mess that. Yes, yes. It's gonna mess that engine up. And so, so it, you're not weeks, gonna run as smooth. Three weeks in the vegan diet. Uh, only three weeks. So like 21 days. You yeah. guys can do that. Anyone listening right so now? Three weeks. Anyone listening right now? You could do 21 days. Come on, like 21 days. Yes. Right. So three weeks. My wife takes me to a fish place. Oh uh, you no. Know, yeah. <laughs> with with. Uh, not the fish. Yes. Yes. With. Very, it's a very popular fish place in Kuwait. Don't want to say the name, but uh -huh. yeah, okay, okay. Fish is catch of I the day. I do not respect that. Fish is catch of the day. Um, sh it was supposed to be, you know, as fresh as it can get. So after after eating uh, fish, I didn't feel satisfied at all. I, I felt I felt no, I felt that low energy again. The, the you know. Uh, feeling heavy and wanting to rest after a meal so for the past three weeks being vegan i didn't feel that at all so now i have uh, uh, you know more more reason to stay away from that kind of food because i i, I was still uh, i was still um, you know working out hard every day intense workouts with the with the vegan diet i'm i'm i'm, I'm, I'm just I'm just doing maybe three times what I was able to do on a on a carnivore diet. You're doing three times more. Yeah. Three times more what? Three times more, more, more weights. More, more the effort of everything. Oh, more effort. Yeah, weights, uh, cardio, endurance. Oh, endurance, big time, huh? Yeah. Yoga, balance. Mm. Skateboard. I just. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah. I just, saw that. I saw you doing a kickflip, right? Yes. Yeah. It's just. It's just overwhelming energy. You can't say you, you no. Know, if you if you do the vegan diet the right way, I believe it's the right way to eat all natural, yeah. full of life, uh, life enzyme food like sprouts, sweet grass shots. You know more more greens. Yeah, 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 greens. yeah. I think we could learn from you because I think there's a lot of listeners out there right now, and I mean, you guys can comment below if you don't agree with this, but I think there's a lot of listeners right now. Uh, that we have that that are maybe questioning am I doing the vegan diet the right way mm -hmm. and the truth is saying vegan diet and what that means is if you're really looking at it as a diet and you're focused on your health and your fitness and and what kind of macros and micros you need and all that sort of stuff and and what nutrients are you lacking what nutrients do you need to to consume and how do you need to get those nutrients are very important when you're talking about diet. Now, when we're talking about going vegan for the animals, we're not talking about health. We're not talking about diet. We're talking about just don't eat animals. Um, but that's not enough for some people. How many people out there went vegan for the animals? And what they're feeling now is like, shit. you know why? Because they're eating like, shit. they're eating like we're about to eat right now. We're gonna eat some Oreos. I know you won't. <laughs> I might eat some Oreos. And, uh, and real quick, the point I make is please share what advice you have for new vegans, experienced vegans. What advice do you have for both? Is it different? And what advice do you have to make sure that they're eating the right way? Are there any resources that you can give? Uh, do you have a website? Do you want the, your Instagram? Uh, I will, I will stop getting more active on social media regarding my meals you know 
Okay, yeah. Okay, not not what I don't think what do. I'm doing on social media is enough, but I, I you know, I've, I've, I'm I'm in, in the middle of a trans transition, you know, going from uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm I I I have a lot of uh, stuff to do with family now, but I think uh, uh, May I will be ready to share more information on my account. Okay, yeah, yeah. Just um, so we got some snacks here. Um, we got the, um, of course, we got the Oreos. I wasn't joking. Yeah. Um, but but that's if you're you're trying out veganism and you don't know. We got some vegan water, of course. Uh, that's a joke. Water should be vegan. I don't know how it's not. Um, we also got some delicious dates. Now, uh, what kind of dates are these again? Can you explain real quick? What, those, what the, what's a date? Okay, I'm from the U.S. We don't even know what the those, hell a date those, is. Those are the dried... Uh, Wait, hold on. Okay, so real quick, just um, explain what's um, all about these dates and what the heck is a date? I'm from the U.S. People dates can really be know. dried like those. Okay, so with, dried. Um, and, 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 and those are laced with date syrup. You can see? Yeah. Okay. Oh, date syrup. Okay. Yeah, I recommend the those come in blocks, but I recommend the ones that should be refrigerated. Uh, the sukari ones, they're fresh, so less less uh, fructose in them. Very beneficial, the fresh ones. Okay. Yeah. And I eat as much as I want a day. Don't count anything. I'm still. Lean as, uh, you know, very lean, you know. How lean for the ones that are listening? I'll just show you. Hold on, wait, hold on, we got more food. I'll show you and... Uh, we also got, um, this is interesting, is this a, oh, it's a pear, oh, that was a potato. <laughs> I was like... This is an inter interesting array of uh, fruits and veggies here. We have the potato, mm. uh, just raw. Now, I'm not um, I'm not against this. I love this. This is great snack food. Now, what about the people? It well, is. just continue. Just it continue. Is. It is. You, you know, just eat as much as... Eat continue, as much though. as fruits a day as you want. Okay. What else? What other advice do you have? Um, go for seeded fruits. Seeded? Yeah. Okay, why is that? Because uh, um, fruits without seeds are GMOs. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. These are GMO, right? Yeah, but well, you know, not, uh, you know. Not too bad? Yeah, not too bad. Okay. But. Uh, Do you mind uh, if I eat the plum? No. You it's can a plum, right? It's plum? I love the plum. More uh, tropical fruits. From Sri Lanka, from Indonesia. Oh, dude. Yeah. I'm going to Bali on May 1st. You, wow. Are you coming? Uh, uh, I want to. It's my spirit home. May 1st, um, that'll be Ramadan time. Mm. You got you got plans? I am, uh, I still have uh, work to do. Mm. But, you know, my, my vacation starts uh, mid-June. Mid ah, shoot. Yeah. But I've you know, I'm I'm definitely considering going back for the fifth time. <laughs> Number five, <coughs> me and her. Yeah. We go on our first time. Wow. We got an amazing, beautiful house. Enjoy paradise. A beautiful house. Where? <coughs> in Bali. And um, near the near the airport. You have to go to uh, Changu, Ubud, and uh, Gili Islands. Gili Islands. Okay, I'll talk to you. Because we already booked it, so yeah. it might be tough this trip. Yeah. But I'm going to rent a motorbike, so I'll take a I trip. I do that too. Oh, yeah. Always rent a motorbike with my children on it. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so. This is the best way to uh, to just get around uh, over there because it's uh, the traffic is so bad. Mm. Yeah. All right, so. Tell us more about um, what to do to do vegan right. How do you eat vegan right? Like, what does that mean? So, uh, more leafy greens, uh, more, uh, more, more sprouts, wheatgrass shots, you know, uh, 
just um, food that's uh, you know packed with oxygen, life enzymes. You know. What does yeah. that mean? Uh, imagine uh, from the, uh, the seed is not uh, you know uh, it, it does have uh, essential oils and vitamins and minerals, but once they get sprouted, you get life force activated in it. So when you consume that food, I believe that you're consuming the sun's energy mm. without, uh, you know, uh, as uh, you know, you're consuming the sun's energy as fresh as it can get through microgreens. It's the start of a new life, you know. You know what? I mm. never heard anyone put it that way. Mm. But now that you put it that way, yeah. So I like I like that. That's good. So more of this food. Like, as, as much as you eat. <laughs> All right, look, bro. Mm -hmm. Bro, is this necessary? <laughs> it is. What do you think? Yeah, like, you look like you're in really good shape. Yeah? Yeah. Stop looking. Close your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> so, there is truth in it. If you can get to this, if you do... If someone can get to this physique level without the use of steroids or supplements or any, you know, chemicals through only vegan food and clean vegan food, it's it's like there is truth in it, you know? Yeah. Um, I hear you. I mean, if I worked out like you did, I would look like you. <laughs> but I don't. Of course. If so o only, it, it takes only if you eat vegan food. Carnivores yeah. can't get to my level. Even if they try. Not with the same amount of effort. You wouldn't be able to put that amount of effort if you were not vegan. That's what I'm saying. So you're just way well, What's up. the difference? What, why does a vegan put more effort into this? The, 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 the raw food I just told you about. Too much energy. It's just overwhelming energy. Can't so get that. for anyone that's listening, mm. that's a vegan right now, that's having trouble with energy, does that sound like you? If that sounds like you, then uh, <laughs> give us the advice for more energy. If you're a vegan that, that really wants to increase their energy, what do you do? Like, what do you start? What do you eat? Energy, just I energy I start my day with... Uh, Eight ounce celery juice every morning. Eight ounce celery juice. Okay. So we need a juicer. So. So juice it up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Juice it up. Green juice. Uh, celery is. Um, I, I switch from green juice. I switch from um, drinking celery juice for two years. Uh, I, I mean, green. Yeah. I switch from green juice to celery juice. Mm hmm. Two years uh, consuming green juice, but you know, forty only forty days in in uh, juicing celery uh, was uh, you know there is no comparison. I think celery is just uh, miraculous. Uh, so celery in the morning. After that, I do my own my own homemade almond milk mixed with berries and oats. Wait, wait, write that down. Sukari dates. Uh, a lot of fruits in between. Sometimes I do intermittent fasting, but you know, if I'm not doing it, just a lot of uh, a lot of fruits. Okay. So it's 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 a lot easier than a strict diet, actually. This lifestyle can be, I can do it for years. You know, I don't feel like I'm doing a strict diet. To be in to be that lean. So. Uh, for lunch and dinner, quinoa, uh, legumes, but I stay away from, uh, I stay away from orange, uh, I stay away from orange lentils. Mm, what is that? They just give uh, stomach problems to everybody. They should stay away from it. But green lentils are very good. So uh, quinoa or brown rice, legumes, uh, a lot of salads. Uh, I do uh, coconut curries using uh, fresh coconuts. 
they sell coconut shreds at Lulu's. If you wanna replace your oil with with just coconut shreds, it will it it will be actually. Wow, you hear that? Yeah. So instead of using oil, use what? Coconut shreds. Coconut Fresh coconut. shreds. Yeah. Fresh coconut shreds. Yeah. What do you what do you think about that? Yeah, she likes it. Yeah. So I think that um, these are some easy tips. Like, what could I have done right now? I could have eaten the Oreos. I don't know if you guys have been watching. How much Oreos did I eat? None. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I ate those dates. Those are sweet as fuck. Sweeter than, sweeter than those Oreos. I ate some grapes. I ate some pear. Yeah. I ate a whole plum. Like, I'm full. I'm chill. Like, I'm not like... eat this whole bag and that's all this like like unbleached enriched flour right and that's like what the hell is that that's wheat flour niacin reduced iron thiamine mononitrate so your body hold on mononitrate yeah b1 riboflavin b2 and folic acid wait that's what unbleached enriched flour is yeah and if you research it I th- uh, i'm sure it's a carcinogen too <laughs> wait the first ingredient has eight attached ingredients to it okay what the heck does this other stuff have they you know thing is High they, can, they, can, they can make they can make a product that tastes the exact same thing Without those additives, so, you know. Palm oil. Yeah. You know the palm oil? Yeah. Babe. <laughs> Don't ever bring me that shit again. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but for real, like, okay, this is vegan. Do I want you to eat this over a donut that killed an animal as well? You're killing yourself. You're killing the planet that these beans are living on from palm oil. Mm. I don't know if you guys know about palm oil. And you're killing the animals that are involved and yourself. I don't know which order I went in. So the point is, these are good for you. These taste delicious. A grape. Have a grape for a snack instead of some Oreos. Now, that's a good change for your health, yes. But do you agree? Would you rather someone eat Oreos over like a donut made with eggs or or milk chocolate? Of course. So there are limitations. There are ways that you could go about it. I mean, I myself struggle with oil. I know sometimes the processed oil, I know it's not good for me, Mm. um, but I struggle with that sometimes. Um, I might struggle with uh, eating some, just going for a blaze pizza because... My wife struggles with blaze pizza too. Yeah, I mean, it's so delicious. You know, when you go to blaze pizza now... Mm -hmm. That's not healthy though. Like it's not up by, you know, it's, it's it's better yeah. than a triple meat, triple cheese pizza. I actually ordered it two days ago for my kids. <laughs> Gluten free vegan cheese. Nice, and how'd yeah. they like it? They love it. Look, you could go to a Blaze Pizza. You know, get I, a gluten free uh, vegan cheese pizza. Let or me just tell you, a regular let, let me tell you something thick about dough. Yeah. 25 different uh, toppings uh, for veggies. L- let me tell you right? something about those products. Those are the best options for your kids, you know? Um, I switched to all, v- you know, vegan products for them. Burgers, nuggets, uh, pastas, uh, meatballs, all vegan. And they love it. They just love it. So they became vegan through that. So if people can, you know, uh, use those products to go vegan, why not? Yes, exactly. So um, there are Oreos, right, have their place in helping people transition to a cruelty-free lifestyle. And that's what it's all about. If you look at what veganism really means, it's not eating veggies, or eating fruits. It's causing the least amount of harm as practically possible to animals, including food, entertainment, clothing, just eliminating all exploitation of animals. So 
that doesn't have anything to do with grapes. I hate when people say, oh, I can't be vegan because I'm allergic to soy. Don't eat soy and don't eat animals. Mm. You know, it's like the truth is that vegan is the least you could do. That's your first step. Yeah. I want to know. I want to know more about the second step. So the first step is going vegan and why? What's the second step? Second step is being active. So activism. Activism. Yes, yeah. activism and only activism. And um, so, first of all, what do you do? What's your form of activism? Like everyone has their own style. Kids. 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 Yeah. Kids. The kids. So Set what do you an like example. about kids? What do you teach Set about an example. the kids? Kids. Uh, they say you know ideas never die, and once you incept the idea inside a kid's head, you know, they will always have that idea. It will always you will always have that spark in them. And, and I can I can see that in you know being b- being a teacher for for eight years now, I can see the effect of it in five or six or seven years when I see them again, you know when I. Uh, when, you know. Kids are like sponges, man. Yeah. So kids will absorb anything that you put into them, and you teach them, and you educate them. They'll absorb the good, they'll absorb the bad, and they'll absorb whatever you feed them yeah. so and literally whatever you feed them and whatever you feed their mind mm. now kids only know what we teach them now if you teach them from a young age to be more compassionate to be more caring you teach them from a young age that that all life is equal yes not everyone is equal everyone's life all is life. equal yes. life is equal right for sentient beings well, I'm not, I don't want to hear plants are alive, too. Uh, yes, they're alive, but they're not sentient. They don't have a brain or a central nervous system. They can't think. They can't feel. They don't have a subjective view of reality. So plants are not sentient. I'm talking about sentient beings' lives, right? Um, comparing to the animals? No. If you live a compassionate lifestyle and you teach your kids that, mm. right? You instill that in them that all lives are are equal, right? And I explain what that means. Now, when that kid goes out to play with others, is that kid ever going to look at a kid of a different religion differently or a kid of a different color differently if you don't teach them those things, right? Or a different sex? Is your is your is your daughter or your daughter's going to treat boys differently than girls or is your son going to treat girls differently than boys? It goes both ways, right? Now, where do they learn that from? Now, if the first form of discrimination we teach them is speciesism, right? And speciesism is where you view some lives as more valuable than others. Oh, a human's life is more valuable than a pig's life or a chicken's life or a fish's life, right? Check the camera. I beeped. That one. And so if you believe that... um, all lives have equal value, right? As a kid, the f- discrimination of speciesism, you'll eliminate that. Yes. And that's usually the first one, right? Where we teach that some animals we love, right? And some animals we eat, kill, murder, enslave, and eat. Mm. Like, the heck? You can't have both. Yes. It's one or the other. It's either they're all for food and we eat everything because we're a uh, carnivore, or we're not a carnivore and we don't need any animals at all, so let's stop exploiting them. It's like, which side are you on, right? The thing is, when you believe that your religion gives you the right to do it, <clears throat> how can you convince them otherwise, you know? Yeah, so you obviously have a lot of experience in that. Mm. Are you asking me to answer how I would answer it? Or are you going to share? How do you answer that question? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I think it's just hard to, you know, go against uh, minds conditioned by uh, the religious propaganda, you know. I don't want to get too deep into it, but yeah, it's just, it's it's just hard. So, So do you avoid it? I, yeah, I just avoid uh, avoid that with uh, with adults. I just do you think you're missing opportunities there to spark or plant a seed? 
I can't get into the minds of adults and tell you how, but, but, I, I, but I can see the effect of it on kids. So, my, uh, my, uh, most. Okay, okay, I got you. It's like, yeah. I probably could convince an adult, but it'll take a lot more time. They've been conditioned for longer. Yeah. Kids have not, they're more impressionable. Mm. Like, I like the term monkey see, monkey do. Yeah. Right? Okay, I get you. That's fair. Yeah. Okay, so what kind of things do you instill in them that makes them feel like, okay, that makes sense, or, okay, yeah, I, I, I'm going to follow you? What do you say? What do you do? Just being a very good athlete, just being in a very good mood the whole time. Uh, I took an oath to stay positive whenever, uh, you know, once I get in my, in my school, you know, and I've been getting... Uh, I've been getting great feedback ever since I, I started doing it. So, also me staying away from animal spirit made my mind very clear. And I don't get, I don't get mood swings anymore. I, I don't get ag- angry with, with with kids like I used to do before mm. I went vegan. So okay. You're more calm now. S- yeah. So more stable. <coughs> more. Yes. Yeah. Emotionally yeah. in control. Yeah. Thing, th- th- thing is with teaching is that you're dealing with the same children uh, five times a day for a long time, you know? So th- they, they, they actually know you very well. So when you become a very good role model, it's just, there's there, the, you know, the kids are wise. I think kids are very wise. They know what's, uh, you know, what's the truth, what's, w- w- you know, what's the best way to act from the heart yeah so know? true like kids are kids are just honest yes they s- they call it like they see it they act from the heart yeah they they see something and they call it for what it is yes there's no filter they don't know that that might offend someone mm. yes they don't know that 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 might be the wrong way to say it but mm. who says that's the wrong way to say it yeah like kids know. That's why if you had a kid, like like a young kid that's in a crib, like a one year old, right? Like how old's how old's your kid? I have a your youngest. S- uh, Sorry. Seven months almost. Okay. Let's say you have your seven month baby in the crib. Mm. And you put down a grape inside that that crib. And you also put inside, like, I don't know, a bunny rabbit mm. inside mm. the crib, right? Yeah. Now, this is your baby. Mm. If your baby eats the bunny rabbit <laughs> and plays with the grape, right, you probably have a crazy-ass baby. <laughs> like, let's be honest. Now, that's not going to happen, Yeah. right? But you can imagine, like, wait, that's true. If we were carnivores or omnivores and we're supposed to kill our own food why don't we what percentage of people kill their own food kill the animal what percentage like two one like i, who, I don't know what the number is but it's low mm. right mm. how many people do you know in kuwait that kill their own food every day every meat they eat is their own no. zero i don't yeah. know any yeah zero. i don't know any in the u.s but anyways you're right you make um, you make a strong impression on them, and kids call it like they see it. Kids are honest. Kids don't eat animals, and if they kill animals, you fear psychotic or something wrong with the kid. Mm. But when an adult kills the animal, we call it sport for fun, for food. So there's a huge like disconnect and hypocrisy there, right? Um, so I think that um, what you're doing with the kids and, and besides role modeling, what else would you say impacts the kids? Is there something else that you do that that really, would you say, makes a difference with the kids that it hasn't that, that you haven't already mentioned? Just uh, being a good athlete. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It has a very big effect on kids, you know? Uh, oh, and why is that? I guess... Uh, I guess because kids, you know, they, they they still believe in superheroes and just superheroes look athletic, you know, 
and that's why they get all you know they get uh, very interested in those in, in, in characters that uh, you know in a way give uh, similarities to superheroes you know yeah that's true that's a good yeah. point okay yeah, yeah. So is there anything else? Do you do you talk to them? Do you teach I about always, nutrition? I, I do you teach about food? To, you know, I, I, telling you that uh, I, t- I told you I teach a bit of geography and history and uh, and environment. So I come across a lot of uh, a lot of uh, issues regarding veganism and environment. You know, whenever I whenever I can see, whenever I come across the you know the environment topic, I can I can. I can talk vegan, you know. I can connect that to the most thing single, you know, the the the, the most effective single thing you can do is. You know, All right. You know? So tell us about what do you teach these kids about the environment? What are some things you teach them? I I I, pu- I try to put videos uh, on uh, animal agriculture uh, and uh, the stat the the statistics uh, on. Uh, you know uh, the meat industry and its effect on the environment you know uh, nutrition mostly so what sort of things specifically you teach what kind of stats what kind of stats are you telling them what kind of stuff are they seeing what kind of information on nutrition does a kid receive you know i think uh, you know um, i use uh, youtube uh, all uh, translated videos I can get my hands uh, on on YouTube I just show them to the kids and they, they you know th- they are really interested in those topics so once you get them interested you just it, it's like uh, you did everything you have you can do the Dude, idea that is so powerful I love that yeah I love anything about kids I love when people talk about what they do for their kids like when I met you the first time and we really talked and hung out, I was at, we were at Viterra, which is a new restaurant that's opened here in Kuwait City. And what's interesting about that is we had a good chance to talk. I met you, I met your wife, I met your three beautiful kids, and I recorded your daughter. Do you remember? Yeah. I recorded her sharing what vegan means, mm. and she shares the definition. Maybe I'll, I'll put it in, um, I'll add the video. I'll add the video because you haven't seen the video yet. I did? No, you. Oh, you saw the raw, but not the edited version. Okay. I'm going to put subtitles on the edited version. I'll put that in this this video. Um, and uh, I'm working on that. That video is in production. <laughs> I have like a whole production. Oh, not a whole production team, but I got, uh, I got someone helping me with videos now, um, which is which is good because I got a lot. I got a lot of videos now. This one, look, one, two, three cameras. So what's gonna happen with this one is it needs three times, three times the editing to get the, the shots lined up. When you're talking, that camera's in. When I'm talking, this camera's in. When like we're both talking or we want a wider angle to get a view of whatever, that's in. Yeah. You know, so it's uh, a little bit more work, but it's worth it. So basically, if you're if I'm hearing you correctly, you share YouTube videos to these kids and make an impact on them. Now, what do you see change in these kids? Do you do they change their diet? Do they talk to their parents? Do you see influence they, elsewhere? They, what do they, you see? They do talk to their parents and, you know, at first parents, uh, they just uh, disagree, you know, of course. Because the uh, most parents didn't, uh, you know, it's a, it's a new thing to them, you know, it's a new lifestyle in Kuwait. They didn't hear nothing about it before. So, uh, but uh, eventually, kids come up to me and to- uh, tell me that their their parents are convinced now for them to go vegan, and this is just, you know, do the kids ever convert the parents? Maybe, maybe. You should ask. You should have a test. Pop quiz tomorrow, today, right now. And you pass it out. Okay. You pass it out. How many of your parents are vegan? Mm. Just get a, yeah. get a quiz, get a poll going. Yes. Add up the tally. And be like 
twenty percent of my kids have vegan parents. <laughs> you know, or like whatever, whatever the number is. You're like, what are you doing for kids, or what are you doing for the future? Like you put that in Instagram. You'd be like, twenty percent of my students have vegan parents. Yeah. Times are changing. Mm-hmm. Then like something like, what are you doing for the animals? You know, hashtag or whatever. And that's on your Instagram. And it has like you like all like flexing <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> or whatever. I don't know. I'm just saying like there's there's ways like there's ways to be creative. Right. And activism and stuff. So what else do you do? I, I, what I else, think, what think, else do you do? I think we should do the cube of truth in Kuwait. Dude, so do I. Oh, my God. An- anonymous for the animals. But um, mm-hmm. it would be I challenging agree. to do it in Kuwait. But we have to. I think we do have to. I agree. Like, um, I think that <clears throat> there's a lot of things that we could do for the animals. And if uh, you can share anything else that either you do yourself that makes an impact for animals, maybe health and fitness, maybe the food you eat. If you can share, of course, of if you can share if, anything if, else that you do for the animals, that in the end it helps the animals, not like, oh, I go to the slaughterhouse and save them. No, I'm talking about if you influence people in a positive way to make change in their food, their lifestyle, that ultimately impacts animals. Is there anything else, maybe health and fitness or anything? Yeah, of course, through health and fitness, I keep telling everybody that they can get... Uh, what are some myths? Like, okay, you can get all Protein the nutrients. Protein myth. Okay, uh, share it. Why is it not true? Uh, you only need 10% of what they, uh, what they claim that you need a day. It's okay, where can you get that? Just legumes. Legumes. Yeah. Anything else has protein. Leafy greens. Leafy uh, greens. Seaweed. Mm-hmm. Nuts, seeds, quinoa. Okay, good. It sounds like you're at your limit. Okay, what else? Another myth. Go. This is called myth-busting rapid round. I don't know. Any other myths? Maybe um, you're going to have stomach problems. Yeah. Maybe yeah, yeah. you never heard that one. No, never heard about it. Okay, good. It's not It's not a very strong myth. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, what about... Um, but, but God said animals are here for me to eat meat. If you're not comfortable answering that, that's okay. Yeah, no, I, I, I can explain it in, uh, in Arabic, but, uh, you know, the literal word for animals in the Quran is... Udhiyya means sacrifice. So, do you sacrifice three times a day, just for your, uh, just for your taste buds? Do you sacrifice life three times a day? Does that mean it is sacrifice? Yeah. No, I hear you. Okay. Um, another question. Um, but we've been eating meat for thousands of years. Like it's okay. We can do that. Yeah, but I think we are a, a evolving species, ever evolving species, and we are evolving not to consume animals anymore. It's becoming cannibalism, you know. Okay, what about? Um, but my doctor said I should eat meat. I need to eat meat because my doctor said. I believe doctors uh, have uh, very uh, little knowledge on nutrition. You believe, or is that true? It is true. Okay, how do you know? Um, my wife is a doctor. Okay, and how much, uh, how much uh, training and nutrition did she get? Maybe 20 hours in eight years. 20 hours in eight years, so... Yeah, or less. And all doctors, uh, all doctors get that. Only get that, you know? So uh, I believe it's, uh, you know, uh, diseases related to stomach, you know, most diseases are related to stomach issues, to your eating habits. And there's a very big study on that called the China study. It's the most, it, it is the most comprehensive study, med- medical study ever made, 15 years. I think it was made on, uh, I don't wanna, we al- almost a million people. It's a very big number relating uh, food choices with uh, disease. Yeah, I saw that one. Um, if you guys are, don't know what he's talking about or you don't know much about the China study, watch um, Forks Over Knives. Forks Over Knives, the documentary you can find on Netflix, uh, will describe everything within Ch- the China study. Like you said, the most comprehensive, the most detailed, the biggest, largest ever study on nutrition uh, that has ever been done, uh, was done. And so we know everything that nutrition does for the body and does not do for the body. 
So if you don't know, uh, definitely check out Forks Over Knives. Okay, yeah. So, um, so what else is there? Any is there anything else that you want to add to that? You know, just uh, it's as simple as uh, take a deep look into uh, the animal's eyes when they when they are mistreated. It, it tells you something, you know. You see a lot of pain, a lot of fear, yeah. a lot of anguish, yeah. a lot of questions. Like when I think about animals suffering, would you pay your money for this no. kind of treatment to continue? No. And when I think about animal suffering, you know what I think about is what questions would they have for us mm. if they could speak our language? Like, I what would they? What would they say? Would they say? To them, we are. Would they say, "Why are you doing this to me?" Right? Yeah. Like that has to be the first question. Come on, think. You're an animal. You're being beat up. You're being tortured. You're forced in a cage, and eventually, you could communicate to your captor. Why? Why are you doing this to me? Thing is, they're Real quick. very intelligent Real quick. too. Yeah. Let's say they could speak to us, and they asked why. And let's say we answered back, right? We we're like, okay, I'll tell you why. You're looking at the chicken, and he's in his cage, and he's asking, "Why are you doing this to me?" And you prepare yourself to answer. What do you say? And let's say you're, let's say you tell the truth. No, let's say you lie first. Let's say you lie. Oh, um, you know, we need to put you in the cage because um, it's safer for you. There's a lot of um, predators outside that might hurt you, right? Oh, okay, thank you. Oh, okay. Oh, we're going to feed you, though. We're going to take care of you. Don't worry. Let's say you lie. Okay. Right? Whatever. You make, a, make up a lie. What if you tell the truth? Hey, so, um, chicken, I know you're in this cage and, and you're wondering why, and it's just, like, bothering you, and why there's so many and why you're so crowded and why are you underfed and why are you forced to do this and this and that. But we do it because you taste good. So you got to understand. And you also do it because it makes us money. So you got to just suck it up. Mm. And we do it because what do you, how do you tell the truth? And then you lie. Now you're a liar, right? But hold up. This scenario doesn't even happen because animals can't talk. So they can't ask us why. So you know what? They suffer even more. Have you ever been in a situation where you just are like, why? Why is this happening? Mm. It puts you m so much more fear, so much more adrenaline, so much more anxiety, so much more stress when you can't understand why. So think about why are you eating animals in the first place? Were you told that you have to? That's not true. Were you told you need protein? That's not true. Were you told that it's because of culture? Just because something happens in culture doesn't mean it's okay. Were you told, what were you told? What was the story that you were told that says we should eat animals? And if that story is just that, a story, and there's no facts, there's no science, there's no studies to do it, then you got to ask yourself a really big question. If I don't have to eat animals, and it's unnecessary, and I don't need to, why am I paying for the abuse and the death and the unnecessary killing of so many animals if we don't have to do this? So that's a big question, and, and I can't answer that. I can't tell you the answer. I can tell you my story. Hamsa can tell you his story, but we can't tell you what you have to do. So just think about it. So I want to wrap this up, if you're okay. Yeah? So I want to wrap this up, and I want to ask if there's one big, big takeaway from this show today um, that just... You don't want the audience or anyone listening or anyone watching to forget one thing. You can only choose one thing that's so important that they must know that they got to do after this, after hearing this podcast. You have to watch the documentaries. You will build up uh, an awareness. Okay, I'll put them up. Which ones? Um, the ones we mentioned. Uh, Top three. Number one. Number one, food choices. Okay, food choices. Netflix. Forks over knives. Forks over knives. Netflix. Cowspiracy. Cowspiracy about the environment and all the damage, and we talked about that. Netflix. And uh, all this on YouTube as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that's it. Yes. Okay. Well, you know what? It was so amazing to get a chance to talk to you. Like, really sit down and 
just pick each other's brains and I think we have a lot of similarities. I think we believe in the same stuff and we want the same thing for this planet, for our kids, for the earth, for animals. Uh, this has been a very amazing conversation. I think that a lot of people are going to learn a lot of things from this, a lot about themselves. They're going to question a lot of things that they, maybe they did before, that they thought they knew that they didn't know, or whatever. They're going to do some research. So one last thing. Where can people find you? So if they want to get in contact my, with you, reach you, ask you more my, questions. Uh, my Instagram account is way too vegan. Two with a, uh, the number. Yeah, the number. Yeah, so W A Y two two vegan vegan, and I'll put that in the I'll put that in the All description. Right, thank and everything. you. Okay, is there anywhere else that they could reach you? Snapchat, Facebook. No, uh, you know, um, I'm, I'm mostly active on Instagram. Okay, mostly active on the Instagram. Okay, and uh, how many followers do you have now? Four thousand four hundred something. All right, let's everyone please let's get this guy to ten thousand. Come on. Like, what are we waiting for? This guy, everyone should be listening to this guy and seeing what his story is. He's going to be teaching a lot more about nutrition, yes. a lot more about the environment, yes. a lot more about the animals. About herbal medicine. Uh, medicine. Holistic, holistic health. Holistic. He's, he's the man, and he's going to basically help um, you get uh, uh, Three years uh, disease-free, not even half a Panadol pill. I think it's true. Very good, uh, clean, vegan food. Everyone can do it. Not even half a pill in three years. Amazing. All right. So way two vegan two with the number. Okay. All right. So uh, stay tuned um, for the podcast that'll be up shortly. Um, thank you guys for listening and um, have a great day. Habibi.